start with, I think um, Paris Agreement has been, of course, this is, um, this is an accord that has been welcomed by, by our countries, especially the LDCs, um, including our country Malawi. I think we subscribe to it, although our country took longer to actually ratify the Paris Agreement, they only ratified this year in June, but I think uh, the signing of it happened earlier on. Last year, but uh, in terms of the impact that this uh, agreement has has had over the last two years, is that I think uh, when you look at the framework that we had in terms of managing climate change in our country, I think we we've, we've seen that uh, at least we we are referring to some of the, the provisions in our in, in the Paris Agreement, We're trying to finalise uh, most of the the, the, the the climate change. Uh, disaster risk management related frameworks at, at country level. For instance, I think we've been doing, um, we've been actually formulating our own uh, national adaptation plans, we've been formulating the, the climate change policy over the past three, four years. But I think after the Paris Agreement, I think we started looking at, uh, because the, our climate change policy was, was still in draft at the time that we, we were actually coming up with the Paris Agreement. Uh, after that, then I think we started re looking at some of the things in our own uh, uh, framework and then making sure that we, we are actually in line with the Paris Agreement. Uh, as, a, as I'm talking right now, I think we actually, Malawi has already uh, um, approved its national climate change policy last year, a year after the Paris Agreement. We are working towards having a climate change BIP, which is also, we want to be in line with the policy and also the Paris Agreement. Uh, okay. yeah. So, but the, I know uh, some other uh, least developed countries are also moving in the same direction. Where I think when uh, we've seen and we have some information that some countries are still uh, doing the uh, reviewing or doing uh, the, their own climate change policies uh, and, and, and views or acts that that are going to be in line with the Paris Agreement. But domestic, I think we still. Uh, early in the stages where we can actually assess more in terms of the impact on the ground related to the Paris Agreement itself. Uh, because I think the one thing that one step that we have taken is to make sure that we, we, we align our policies to what the Paris Accord is actually uh, telling us. Um, okay, um, in terms of the expectations for our country in COP23. As you know, I think we are heading towards COP24 where uh, or year that we are going to have a global stock take and then a facilitated dialogue. Um, I think two years down the Paris Agreement and after it gets into force uh, last year, I think we expect that I think by this year uh, we should have uh, at least some draft work plan on how we can implement this uh, uh, Paris Agreement. Um, we know we, we've done all the work that, uh, that is required for us to make sure that we have this Paris Agreement, but I think implementation is what is really uh, needed right now. We need those uh, implementation modalities, uh, at least in getting uh, the work should be uh, getting towards the, the end, uh, as we all know that we already started drafting the, the rules book. I think we need to make sure that that rules book is actually um, uh, made possible um, uh, to be there uh, in the next uh, uh, one year. So to this year, I think we we really need to actually uh, see that countries have made strides in terms of coming up with the, uh, the implementation modalities of most of the articles in the, uh, uh, in the Paris Agreement. I think there are also a number of things that we also want to move, I think, as countries in the LDCs, uh, as Malawi, I think we'd like to see the, the climate financing issues moving uh, towards uh, actually um, displacement, not only uh, the issue of okay, mobilizing and also pledging, but I think we still need to get some financing out there so that at least the local action in terms of climate change needs to be uh, on the ground. This, we need to see some implementation on the ground. I think there are also uh, a lot of issues, I think, one of the issues has been the issues to do with agriculture. I think most of the least developed countries are relying so much on agriculture. But this, um, uh, the discussions around agriculture in, in, 
and in, in, in at COP like this, I think have not really yielded so much. So we expect that perhaps this is a COP that we can actually move uh, a step further in terms of discussing uh, issues to do with agriculture. Some decisions need to be made. Uh, decisions that can only that can also help uh, uh, the least developed countries to actually move uh, towards uh, food security issues and also um, uh, resilience towards uh, the impacts of climate change. Adaptation is, uh, is a very key element to, in, our, in our case uh, in the least developed countries. I think we all know the, uh, the reason why we need to adapt as, as countries. I think we don't have that uh, really much capacity. We need to be assisted in terms of our adaptation. We can do mitigation, yes, but I think we're already feeling the impacts as in uh, least developed countries. So we need to make sure that we have uh, that support in terms of adaptation so that maybe we can move some, some strides ahead. I think there are so many things we can talk about. So we, the elements of gender needs to be more discussed. Most also importantly, we are also considering the element of loss and damage, uh, where we also need some some strides in terms of movement around the discussion. Yes, the loss and damage has been recognized under the Paris Agreement, but I think there are certain modalities that need also to be put in place. And we're talking about making sure that we're financing the, uh, uh, the loss and damage uh, mechanism uh, and, and all other elements. We also want to make sure that the global stock take that is uh, going to happen in the next coming year, perhaps we also need to include the uh, the review of the loss and damage uh, uh, issues. So I think those basically those are some of the things that we expect as uh, at COP23 to actually move, see some progress towards uh, discussions around these elements and maybe key decisions can be reached that uh, also uh, in favor of the uh, least developed countries. What are the main obstacles or hurdles that you perceive in the way of LDCs achieving those goals you just pointed out? I think we, we have seen that uh, over the years discussions have been, been um, in some elements of discussions. I think time has not been um, there for actual people to, or parties to, to discuss and agree on certain uh, uh, elements. Like you, you would actually, um, for instance, in some negotiations, uh, uh, on some elements that would only be given maybe four hours uh, a week or two weeks that uh, there are so many things that needs to happen uh, so many discussions that needs to happen including informal informals but then by uh, by the limited time I think we haven't seen much progress this is also one of the fears that we have that perhaps maybe we might not have that time to actually conclude certain discussions because I think negotiations would always be slow, would always want to actually accommodate everyone. So I think we also need to do good in terms of the timing, uh, allocation of time to some certain uh, key elements of the discussion. Otherwise, I think uh, that's one of the hurdles that I'm, I'm, I'm seeing so much uh, on these negotiations. The other elements are, are related to uh, the support to some of the, uh, um, the elements, even if we agree on certain things, let's say for instance, mobilization of financing, do we really mean it to say in the next couple of years uh, we are going to have that financing to actually uh, um, uh, finance or support our local action as, as in uh, least developed countries. I think we've seen, heard uh, so many pledges over the years, but I think it's, it's always not easy for you to get the, the financing and then to, for you to implement a certain uh, actions that, that uh, we are supposed to be implementing. So, yeah, th those are some of the hurdles that I'm seeing, but I think we will see as, as the negotiations uh, are going. So, how can UNFCCC process and events like COP23 uh, promote the cross border cooperation of countries of the global north and global south towards climate justice? Uh, let's put it this way. Um, we know uh, COPs, uh, these, are, these are forums where you want to bring in all parties to actually dialogue on certain issues. I think one thing that we need to, uh, we need to actually be thinking about is a COP that uh, could actually 
be done in a fair and, uh, and, and an honest uh, manner, where I think even the proceedings are, are not necessarily providing that kind of hindrance uh, in terms of uh, um, parties coming together for certain courses uh, or certain discussions. I think over the years we've seen how negotiations are structured. Sometimes I think we, um, you know, the technical aspects of, of the negotiations um, uh, make you see that maybe they, 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 they are, there might be some challenges or gaps in terms of our countries, for instance, the least developed countries to actually engage uh, so much in some of the technical uh, elements of the negotiations. I think that we've always uh, seen that some countries have been always been left out, both in terms of making sure that countries have a certain limited number of delegations when they are coming here, which is in line with the uh, with the agenda items that are available at at COPS. So I think that in that way, um, because we we've, we've seen, I'm coming from a least developed countries for for instance, governments are not, do not have all the necessary funding for them to actually bring here all the, all the people that are going to help us in terms of advancing our own negotiations. So we rely on so many people, so many expertise, which sometimes compromises the positions that we have uh, as countries. So if, if, if possible, if UNFCCC has all the uh, uh, resources or they can, they know all these ch challenges, I think it could be fair enough for, 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 for a platform like this so that can, uh, to, to make sure that countries are actually coming up with the, uh, delegations to, that are, are capable enough and also that are a good number that they can actually tackle and participate fairly in all the uh, elements of negotiations. So I think that, to me, would actually be a step further in terms of making sure that we are integrating the, the actually uh, the discussions that happens at COP are very comprehensive enough. They are taking into account uh, all the, uh, the issues out there, all the countries out there, and countries have all the space to actually present, represent it or, or present something to, uh, uh, to such kind of forum.